But how have you been? How has uh, how has this whole pandemic been on you and uh, and your family? Um, you know, honestly, it, it hasn't changed a lot for me. Um, I'm not a big people person. I I uh, I work at a high school with with uh, special ed kids, and when we got closed down last March or whatever, we kind of just went to um, you know online. I continue to help kids through the end of the school year, and then. Um, once summer hit, we, we, you know, I continue to train, and then that's really about all I do. I, I've, I've got two daughters; I take care of them, and and um, I, I don't do a lot else. I I work out, and that's about it. So I, you know, the gyms. I, I live in Minnesota. The gyms closed for probably six weeks, two months, but uh, there was all kinds of things to do. There was, you know, a lot of wrestlers I know have gyms and stuff, so I worked out with them, and a lot. It, it really didn't change too much for me. What's uh, what's it like being a teacher who uh, you know has a hundred pro fights? I mean, I'm sure the kids look at you very different than they would other teachers. Yeah, I, it definitely comes in handy sometimes. I definitely use it to my benefit. Um, at the same time, I uh, I've learned a lot over those hundred fights and twenty years of doing it. So it, it's uh, I've learned a lot and I've learned. Um, working with a lot of different people and, and I think a lot of it has, has helped me to where I what I do today what's this um I, I read an article and it was a co-met thing that you did over the summer is that is that a way to to give back to the community to help kids stay fit what what's the purpose of it and how long have you been doing it uh, I think this is my sixth or seventh year doing it um yeah it's just a summer training camp I run for kids I we live in a I live in a small town it's about five six thousand people and uh, i'm the strength coach at the high school i work at and and um you know it's just a basic it's a, a basic training camp to keep kids busy during the summer and and it's kind of taken off and we've had probably 100 150 kids the past past couple summers so it's it's it keeps me busy in the summer and and uh and keeps the kids busy so it, it works out well for both of us was there any modifications that need to be done uh, because of the pandemic? I'm sure yeah. they can have a whole lot of kids. Quite a few. I mean, we have to change different locations quite a few times as far as, you know, we couldn't be in the, the weight room at the school and we, we couldn't even be on school grounds for a while. But we just adapted. We changed. We, we moved equipment around. And probably by, like, uh, July, we were back in the weight room at the school. So there was about – five weeks six weeks where we you know we were outside more which i thought was fine we, we moved equipment outside and you know kids are are pretty adaptable you know they'll change to to really anything and it was more a matter of me changing my workouts and I, they'll pretty much do whatever i tell them so i'd write something down they'd go do it and, and by july we're back in the weight room and nothing really changed i want to talk uh talk now about your career it's really um quite special what you've done i mean you're only a one of a handful of people who have reached 100 fights how does it feel to, to be kind of mentioned there with all those guys the travis fultons and there's only a handful of you that have, have done it how does it feel to to be mentioned among those people i don't know i guess i it uh makes me feel old i mean i make <laughs> me realize i've been doing this a long time and, and um i i mean i i definitely take a lot of uh a lot of pride in it, you know, having a hundred fights and, and like you said, Travis Fulton uh, and Dan Severn, Jeremy Horn. I mean, those guys, when I started were, were guys I looked up to and, and there's a few others out there. So it, it definitely, um, I'm definitely very proud of it. Um, at the same time, I don't, I don't feel like I've had a hundred fights. Like I, I think about it sometimes or I'll look at like sure dog or whatever. And I'm like, God, I've been doing this a long time, it, but physically I feel good. I, you know, I probably don't have a hundred more in me, but uh, I still feel pretty good. So it's it, it's funny because I mean, I'm I'm 25, and if you if you put <laughs> like if you put a hundred like you're, you're like you remember a hundred days of your life, I'm gonna be like, no, no, I can't even do that. Is there like looking back at your career? If some if I mention a fighter, do you remember the specific fight? Like, or are there oh, fights yeah. that just you drown out? No, I think I remember every one of them. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'd probably remember every one of them. Is I mean, there... every one of them, every one of them is kind of a different story. Um, I've, I've given like speeches and 
and talks to athletes and in high schools and, and stuff like that. And um, when I'm coming up with like uh, things to talk about, like that's one of the things I'll do is I'll go through my list of fights and everybody, every one of them's got a story or, you know, some stories are better than others and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think I could probably remember every one. At, uh, at what point did you realize, like, let's, let's go for 100. Like, what, was it like 50, 60 fights in or where you're like, you know what, I may as well just aim for 100 or was it just yeah, let's it was, just keep fighting? It was like when I got to in the 90s, like I didn't even didn't even think about it. Like for a long time there, I was fighting a lot, like 10 years yeah. ago, eight. Yeah, probably eight, ten years ago, man, I was fighting like nine, ten times a year, mm-hmm. and they just racked up. Like you didn't even have time to think about it, you know. And as I've gotten older and, and just haven't had as many opportunities, then you know, once I got into the nineties, then I started to realize, like, man, I'm really close to a hundred. When you're fighting that frequently, I mean, you see it even in the UFC with guys like Donald Cerrone, and he only fights five five times a year. Uh, I can't imagine 10 or 11. I'm sure there's a lot of times where you're going in there with, with nagging injuries and stuff like that. Was there What was the worst injury you had going into a fight? I fought in Louisiana. This was like 2005, probably. And I, I broke my hand training for, for the fight. It was a four-man tournament. Um there was a couple tough guys in it, and uh, Jared Hammond ended up winning. He fought in the UFC. He was a really tough guy. But I was, when I was training for it, I fought, I broke my hand, and I didn't want to pull out of the fight because it was paying pretty well. And I, I just – back then, you just didn't pull out of fights. Like, it's just it's something yep. you didn't do. So there wasn't athletic commissions or anything back then. And I remember I taped my hand. It was like a, a club. Like, we completely <laughs> taped it. Like, I couldn't grip nothing. It was just like a big ball of tape. And, and I, I won my first round fight, and I just took the guy down and submitted him with something. And then uh, I fought Jared Hammond. Like I said, he fought in the UFC. He did pretty well. And um, he freaking just was pounding on me. Like, I couldn't take him down. I only had one hand. My conditioning wasn't good because I hadn't been training like I should have because all I could really do was run. And... Uh, I just remember, I remember he, he kept hitting me and hitting me. And I, if I was smarter, I just would have went down. But I was, I was just stubborn. I wouldn't go down. And he just kept pounding on me. And there was nothing I could do. I, was, I had like I was one hand. And I don't know. It was just crazy things like that. Yeah, it's, it's insane. I was going through your list. And I'm like, man, he fought everybody. I mean, <laughs> Keith Jard- you're like, you fought Keith yeah. Jardine really early on in your career, yeah. too. Which, um, I mean, which is insane to think about. Like, it was your, yeah. what, fourth or fifth fight, and you're fighting, yeah. looking back, a guy like Keith Jardy, and you won. Yeah. Is there one fight that stands out more than others where you're like, wow, I beat that guy, reflecting back on it? Or are they all pretty probably, just... probably the first time I fought in Japan, when I fought uh, Kazuki, uh, um, uh, uh, Kazuki Fujita. And um, back then, he was like, he was tough. I mean, he was one of the top guys in the world. And um, my manager called me. It was really short notice. It was like maybe a week's notice. And at the time, Fujita was like a legend in, in Japan, especially. And um, I'm like, I was managed by Monty Cox, who's a legendary manager in the sport. And I'm like, Monty, I don't know if I could take the fight. It's like we we're flying out in like three days. It's like, it's like we can, they pay like 50 grand. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it. Like, I didn't even care. And we got to Japan and I uh, I knocked Fujita out with and back at the time he was he was known as, as Ironhead like nobody had knocked him out yeah. like he had beaten Kerr he beat Shamrock like he was one of the top guys and and I went into there it was like it was at uh, Saitama Super Arena and the place was packed like thirty thousand people and and uh, first jab I threw like just a little baby jab and boom I knocked him out. And the whole place, I mean, they, they're quiet anyways, but the whole place like was like silent. And I honestly didn't know what to do. I was like 30,000 people in there. I was probably the most shocked person in the arena. I never managed to knock like Fujita out. Like that was just unheard of. And I did it with like a little baby jab. I just caught him in the right spot. So that one always kind of pops into my head. Yeah, it's it's funny when, when I look at your career. and I'm, You'd go on tears where you would win right. like 10, 12, 13, 14 fights in a row. Was there a point where you're like, man, I want to get to the UFC again or go to a Bellator? 
I know you had the one fight in, in the UFC. Was it always a dream of yours to, to maybe get back there one day, or, or was that never a priority for you? I mean, obviously, I think anybody that, that competes in mixed martial arts, that's the goal. I mean, yeah. um, I'd be lying. I mean, I still train. I still fight. I, I wish I was fighting more. I mean, obviously, that's still my goal. Like, that's the ultimate goal for anybody that, that steps in the cage. Um, back then, like, when I, I fought in UFC 40 and I fought in UFC 52, back then it was, like, a big deal to fight in UFC. Like, there yeah, was sure. not a lot of people doing it nowadays. I mean, a lot of people are getting opportunities, and rightfully so, but there's just a lot more chances, you know. There's a, a ton more shows um, and just so many more opportunities. Like, back then, 2002, 2003, around there, like, they were doing UFCs, like, once a month. Like, it was it was a huge deal to fight in the UFC back then. Not to say that it isn't now, but it, it was just different back then. What's the uh, what's the biggest change you've noticed? I mean, as someone who fought in the early 2000s, as well as someone who fought most recently in 2019. I mean, 19 years. I'm sure you've seen a lot of change, both in the fighters and yeah. in, the, in the industry itself. What's the biggest thing that that's changed for you? Just that, like back when when I started, like all you had to know was wrestling. Yeah, um, you didn't have to know any jujitsu, boxing. I mean, you had to be in shape and you had to be a good wrestler. And for the longest time, that's all I did. That's all I was. I was always in shape, and and I was a good wrestler. And, and nowadays, everybody knows everything. Like every every kid knows jujitsu, and they wrestle since they were little kids, and they they've boxed. And now, kids are like experts at everything. I mean, back then it was it was very like you only needed to know wrestling. Yeah. Now it's everybody knows everything. And then to compete nowadays, I mean, I've, I've had to adapt too. Like, I've, I've got to learn how to box better. I've got to learn how to do better jiu-jitsu. I think that's what I love most about mixed martial arts. I, I do a little bit of jiu-jitsu, but nothing yeah. else. I'm nowhere near going in, into a cage. I don't like getting hit. Um, <laughs> but I think that's one of the things that I've noticed is there's always room to grow. I mean, you yeah. can always learn. You can yeah. learn from the white belts. You can learn yeah. from the black belts. And I think that's what really stands apart from from so many other sports. I mean, in basketball, you yeah. kind of plateau. In, in yeah. mixed martial arts, there's always a new element to learn. Absolutely. I think the biggest thing I respect now is boxing. Like, literally, like you, you said, 19 years I've been doing this. And, like, I appreciate boxing so much and appreciate boxers so much, especially, like, the higher-level guys, like the elite yeah. guys. Like, those guys are unbelievable. Like, I have so much respect for those guys. It's It's amazing what they can do. You've spent a lot of time working with so many people in so many disciplines. Was there one person that stood out, whether due to athleticism, whether it was strength? Was there one person that you're like, man, that guy is a freak? <laughs> um, uh, Tim Sylvia was really impressive. Just he, yeah. uh, he was such a hard worker, and he, I, he was such a nice guy too. Like he, I, I think a lot of people give him don't give him the credit he deserves as far as a fighter, but as a person too, like I would go down, down to Iowa and he'd let me live with him and we'd, we'd train together. And, and, uh, his, his takedown defense was so good. He was so hard to take down and he, he got so good with his jab and his, I mean, he beat so many tough guys and, and I, I don't think he probably gets the credit he deserves, but he, he was a great heavyweight. Yeah. I think he's a, I think he's a UFC hall of famer. I'm surprised yeah. he's not in there. I'm like, yeah. this guy is, he, not only that, I mean, he's huge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's one of the biggest guys I think I've that's ever yeah. competed in the UFC. Yeah. He's very, very big, very, very impressive. A lot of impressive yeah. wins. Um, one of his opponents, uh, former opponents, Frank Mir, his daughter yeah. just announced that she's uh, going to compete in MMA. As someone who has two daughters of your own, what's your thoughts on, on you know, your kids following your legacy? And, and what would your advice be to to um, to kids, I guess, who, who want to take that road? I get that question a lot, like, younger kids you know like they send me messages on instagram like how do i get into mixed martial arts i'm like don't do it like <laughs> go to school and, and, then, and then go to college and get your degree and and obviously i'm a big i love wrestling i coach wrestling I'm, and I, I tell kids to wrestle all the time but you know if, in if good get a good job go to college get a good job and and then if you want to do some jujitsu do some jujitsu or, or some boxing or some you know there's wrestling clubs um, and then if you still want to fight, then maybe look and get, look at getting into it. I think 
people see like UFC on TV and, and they think like these guys are making all of them are making millions and million dollars and and it, it, it doesn't work like that for most of them. You know, there's obviously some that are, but um, I mean, it's a hard, hard business. Like there's not a lot of money involved and there's a lot of time, a lot of commitment involved. As uh, I mean, we see it on TV. There's so many issues right now in MMA, whether it's the judging, whether it's the refing. What is the biggest change that you would make as someone who's fought uh, for so long and, and, and kind of seen it all from a fighter's perspective? What's the one thing that you wish they had done better? Oh, man, that's a good question. Um, you know, nothing really. I think I really enjoy the sport the way it is now. Uh, um, I mean, it's changed quite a bit. The rules have changed, but I think right now is the best version of, of mixed martial arts that we've ever seen. Um, I, I think, I think the sport right now is, is in, is in good hands. I'll ask you one last question and then I'll let you go. Um, you have a hundred fights. How many more are left in you? Are you looking to go for 350 like Travis <laughs> Fulton or, or what, what is the goal? You know, I don't really have a number no more. I, that was my goal to get to 100 and see, you know, and I feel really good. I feel better now than I ever have. I I really wish I was, I was competing more. I wish I was fighting more. Obviously, with the, the pandemic, that slowed everything down. I, I hope to still fight this year. Um, but, I mean, I still feel really good. I I, I obviously, and I'm, I'm, I'm a self-aware man. Like, I realize I can't compete with the top 10 UFCs top 10 heavyweights in the UFC, probably even the top 20. Um, but there's still a lot of guys out there I can beat. Um, there's, there's still a lot of heavyweights out there I can beat. There's still a lot of money I could, I could make. Um, so I still want to compete. I still want to fight. But at the same time, I realize I'm, I'm not going to be beating, you know, the, the top guys in the world no more. So um, I don't get offered fights as much as I used to. Um, but I, uh, I wish I was fighting a lot more. All right, man. I've been a fan for for a long time, and even That's if I'm missing a fight, I'm scrolling through to see if you've had another yeah. one of the list. Been watching you, hoping you got to 100. So I'm glad you made Thanks, it, man. man. Glad you got 100. Thanks for coming on, hey, and uh, I wish you all the best. Thanks, man. Take care. Good talk to you.